Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Horror Mine. My name is Vic Shy, and this is The Scare Score, where I break down horror movies and rate them on how scary I think they are. In this episode, I'll be going over the 2004 South Korean psychological war horror film, our point. A lot of people have been asking about this one, so here it is. The film tells the story of a squad of South Korean soldiers on a mission to rescue a missing platoon during the Vietnam War. The soldiers realize they may not be the only ones on the mysterious island and slowly start to lose their minds. I'll be going over the events that take place throughout the film while breaking down each scare scene and rating them on how scary they are or attempt to be. Our point is a lesser known film that is part of a not so common war horror movie genre. But how scary is it? Sit back and relax and join me as we explore our point and tally up the scare score. Our movie begins with an eerie radio transmission from call sign Donkey 3, which belongs to a missing unit. <laughs> A soldier from the unit has his face covered in bandages and says his unit was completely wiped out. His superior, Captain Park, says it's the third time this month that the missing platoon has sent a transmission. We meet our main character, Lieutenant Choi, who along with a fellow soldier are ambushed by a Vietnamese woman after spending an evening in the red light district. The soldier doesn't survive the attack and Lieutenant Choi is taken to see Captain Park. They form a squad of nine soldiers, including Choi, to go search for the missing platoon. Lieutenant Choi has been chosen to lead the team alongside Sergeant Jin because they have a reputation of being hardcore. The squad consists of Sergeants Cook, Park, Jang, and Oh, and Corporals Byun, Lee, and Joe. The men get on a boat and head for an island somewhere in Vietnam. When they arrive, they take a photo capturing their first day in the R Point. While walking through the woods, they are suddenly ambushed by gunfire. Lieutenant Choi successfully flanks the enemy and takes them out on his own. The enemy turns out to be a lone Vietnamese woman with a strange bracelet on her wrist. None of the men want to finish her off and they decide to spare her. I'm all for sparing people's lives and all, but how about we take the AK-47 she just tried killing us with before walking off. They arrive at the R point and find an engraved stone where it begins. Corporal Joe reads the words written in Chinese and says that hundreds of years ago, the Chinese deleted a bunch of Vietnamese people and threw them in the lake. The lake was filled and a temple was built on top of it. It then eerily reads, wherever you go, I'll be there. He's unable to read the rest, which says, if you have blood on your hands, you can't go back. Reading that stone alone would have been enough for me to turn back, and not even a James Francis Ryan could get me up there. But these guys are manlier than me, and no eerily worded ancient stone is gonna stop them from accomplishing the mission. While answering nature's call in nature, Corporal Joe feels that something isn't quite right. He says that the land is a good place for ghosts. <laughs> So far, the film hasn't been very scary at all, and I think fake jump scares are the absolute worst. The next day, they locate an old building surrounded by heavy fog. The film is supposed to take place on an island somewhere in Vietnam, but was mostly filmed in Cambodia. This building is the previously abandoned Bokor Palace Hotel built by the French colonists in the 1920s. In the film, it serves as an abandoned French plantation. The squad does some real tactical building clearing and stumbles upon an old wooden box. Lieutenant Choi briefs the squad and says our point is considered a sacred spot for the Vietnamese people. They only have seven days to search for and rescue the missing platoon, who are part of the 53rd Battalion. Sergeant Oh was from the same battalion but says he doesn't know anyone from the missing platoon. They split into two groups and officially start the search. Corporal Joe goes to take a leak and gets separated from his group. Someone is seen running through the tall grass and he manages to link up with other soldiers. One of the soldiers has the words Jung Suk, wait for me, written on the back of his helmet. The soldiers prone out in the grass and completely disappear. In a traditional war film, that would be considered good camouflage, but in a horror film, it's considered creepy. This was a good moment that utilized its unique war premise to create a genuinely creepy scare. There was obviously something wrong with those soldiers and having them technically prone out only to disappear into the grass was pretty clever. The squad go searching for Corporal Joe and stumble upon Cambodian ruins. I love seeing Cambodia being represented in media because, well, for those who are wondering, I'm Cambodian. They all regroup at the ruins and find freshly lit jaw sticks, meaning someone else is nearby. They then find Corporal Joe, who was hiding under a rock, terrified. Back at the plantation, Corporal Byun manages to turn on the lights inside, and Joe starts looking for the helmet with writing on it. As he scrambles to find the 
helmet, we see a POV shot of something watching them. Sergeant O gets triggered for some reason, which is revealed later. A helicopter arrives carrying a squad of American troops. The troops are being led by Sergeant First Class Beck, who checks on the building every few days. He has a storage room in the plantation that he tells them to stay out of. He says the building was a retreat for French soldiers who were suddenly all mysteriously killed. He says there are rumors surrounding the place, but just laughs it off without actually saying what they are. He and his men have a bet that when they come back in four days, the Korean squad will all be dead. I already told you, this is our point. No one can survive. Corporal Byun says he received a transmission from a nearby French army unit from a Corporal Jack and his twin brother Paul. This confuses Lieutenant Choi because there are no other units in the area. Sergeant O oh asks Corporal Joe how he knows about the helmet with Jung Suk written on it. The helmet belongs to one of the missing soldiers and he wonders how Joe could possibly know about it. Byung fixes the tape player and the soldiers have a fun time dancing to some music. This is exactly how I dance if my dad ever came back, which means I'll never actually be able to do it. It's all fun and games until the screams of agony and gunshots come on. <laughs> It's a surprisingly chilling moment that quickly sapped all the fun and happiness out of the room, kind of like a Dementor, a South Korean Dementor that's also in the army during the Vietnam War. Sergeants Jing and Cook have an argument because Jang found out that Cook's MOS, or military occupation, is actually a cook. It's meant to be funny because he's always bragging about how badass he is and how he's the king of going on missions. He's got nothing to be ashamed of because there's nothing wrong with being a cook. We see a picture of his wife and kid before they notice Private Jung walking into the woods. Lieutenant Choi looks out into the field and briefly sees the same Vietnamese woman who ambushed them wearing a white ao yai, a Vietnamese dress. The next morning, Private Jung is found dead just hanging out from the roof of the building. The reveal is pretty gnarly and his blood just falls onto Sergeant Park's face. Sergeant Jin believes the Viet Cong soldiers are responsible and clearly wants to retaliate. Lieutenant Choi, however, wants to keep the squad's focus on their original mission. They return to the ruins and once again see freshly lit Jung sticks. They set up a booby trap to get back at the enemy. The soldiers realize they knew virtually nothing about Private Jung and don't even remember what he looked like. Lieutenant Choi tries reporting Private Jung's death and learns that Jung was actually a soldier from the missing platoon. They initially started the mission with nine men and Private Jung's ghost mysteriously joined them when they got to the R point. <laughs> Sergeant O oh has a flashback of when he was in the 53rd Battalion. The soldier with the writing on the back of his helmet was his friend, and Jung Suk was the name of his daughter. This interaction between them was right before the platoon went missing. Sergeant Jin also has a flashback where we see his superior officer telling him to do whatever it takes to close the case. He hands him a dog tag, which won't come into play until later. Corporal Byun is asleep and doesn't hear a transmission from the ghost of the French soldier. <laughs> While it pours down rain, Lieutenant Choi sees the same Vietnamese woman from earlier. The bells on her wrists can be heard and he decides to follow her. She walks off into the woods and he suddenly finds himself surrounded by hundreds of graves of the French army. The soldiers died in 1952, which would have been during the First Indochina War, where the Vietnamese fought the French for independence. He sees the grave of Jacques and Paul and the bells from the woman's bracelet in front of their grave. He realizes that Corporal Bion was right and drops his lighter as he gets up. It's a decent revenge but done in a really cheesy way. The music and the lightning were a little overly dramatic. The voiceover by Sergeant First Class Beck was also pretty unnecessary. A lot of French soldiers were exterminated here. It all happened so fast. It's a moment that kind of highlights one of the film's weaknesses, trying to balance the war and horror elements together. The psychological side of what the soldiers are experiencing is done pretty well, but the film is at its weakest when it tries to overdo its horror elements. As Sergeant O keeps watch, he is visited by the spirit of his missing friend. We realize that his friend asked him to get a camera for him before he went missing. He wanted the camera to take pictures for his daughter back home. Sergeant O lied and said that he would get the camera in a couple of days when he actually already had had it and kept it for himself. Sergeant O finally realizes who it is and takes off running into the ruins. He hears the bells directly behind him as the ghost of his friend approaches him. The scare scene is done really well because it combines the ghostly elements with excellent storytelling. The moment Corporal Joe mentioned the helmet with the name Jung Suk written on it, Sergeant O became frightened, though we didn't quite know why. We now know he felt guilty and scared because he cheated his own friend before his death. Now that we've learned the real story behind the spirit with the helmet, those scenes become more impactful 
powerful and a lot scarier, so I'll give them some late points. Sergeant Jin confronts Choi about Private Jung and they hear an explosion in the distance. They go to the ruins and discover that Sergeant O triggered the booby trap. Referencing the camera, he apologizes and says that he didn't mean to lie before dying. Lieutenant Choi finds the bells on his helmet and knows that his death was more than just an accident. Corporal Joe is now convinced that our point is haunted and that the leadership is hiding something from them. Sergeant Jin says that all they have to do is find the tags of the missing soldiers. He threatens to throw anyone that talks about ghosts in jail. He speaks to Lieutenant Choi and it's obvious that he just wants this mission to end. The next day, they resume the search and the men don't want to be in Lieutenant Choi's team. He has a negative reputation of troops dying under his command. Sergeants Jang and Cook go with him into the woods while the rest go with Sergeant Jin. He takes the men away from their assigned search zone despite Choi's orders not to. They find the lighter he dropped, but none of the graves are there. He then pulls out the dog tag given to him by his superior and tosses it in the field. He intentionally tells them to search that area so they can find the tag and end the mission. Sergeant Jang realizes that they have been walking around in circles and are unable to leave the area. While Corporal Byun tries contacting Choi's team, Sergeant Jin goes into the woods on his own. He sees someone running and chases after them. While giving chase, Sergeant Jin falls off a cliff and wakes up in a cave. Choi's group discovers the American helicopter along with the dead bodies of Sergeant First Class Beck and his crew who appear to have been there for months. They realize that the soldiers they spoke to days before were ghosts. Sergeant Cook says that when he gets home, he wants to go on a picnic with his family and Lieutenant Choi says that it'll happen to keep them motivated. Sergeant Jin's crew goes looking for him and find the bodies of the missing soldiers inside of a body of water. <laughs> They continue looking for Sergeant Jin as Corporal Joe hears someone calling his name. He turns around and sees the ghost of Sergeant O looking at him. There are some really nice moments of suspense and tension that are almost immediately cut off by the next scene. These moments could be much more effective if the film didn't continuously switch back and forth from everyone's perspectives. While searching the cave, Sergeant Jin hears a radio transmission from the missing platoon and is also being watched. He follows the sound and finds the body of the dead radio operator. The scene is actually very suspenseful and creepy until the face reveal of the dead soldier which looks kinda silly. Corporal Joe tells the group they're being followed and thinks that Sergeant O's ghost is coming for him. Corporal Lee tells him to cut the crap and to shoot on sight if he sees anything. Terrible advice that Corporal O unfortunately takes to heart as he starts blasting away at the other approaching team. He takes out Sergeant Cook in the process who looks like he won't be having that picnic with his family after all. They try to contact command but are unsuccessful. Choi goes into the American storage room and finds nothing but old unused equipment, making the soldiers realize that the Americans were actually ghosts. Corporal Lee realizes that Choi lied to them and points his weapon at him. Choi orders them to move the equipment downstairs and won't have anyone disrespect his rank. <laughs> They finally get in contact with their command and request a chopper to extract them immediately. They are told that it's too dark now and the earliest time the chopper can be there is 5.50 AM. Sergeant Jin comes in carrying the skull of the old radio operator and this is where all hell breaks loose. Lieutenant Choi holds him at gunpoint and has him confirm his identity. He confirms his identity but the sinister smile on his face reveals that he is possessed. He deletes Sergeant Park with a machete and the men obliterate him from existence. Corporal Joe sees the spirits of Sergeant Sergeant O and Sergeant Cook, but no one else sees them. The entity is now circling the room looking for another body to possess. Knowing this, Choi has all the men confirm their identities one by one, which seems pretty useless because Sergeant Jin was able to do it even while being possessed. Blood starts to seep from the old radios as a transmission emits by the ghosts of the French army. It's a brief but very effective moment that successfully does what I wanted more out of this film, creatively blending the film's premise of war with creepy horror elements. Corporal Byun then becomes possessed and detonates a grenade. The explosion blinds Sergeant Jang and Corporal Lee starts to freak out. Corporal Joe becomes possessed and one-shots Lee. Lieutenant Choi then unloads on him, leaving only him and Jang remaining. He tries to calm him down and finds an old picture in his pocket of the old French unit. The Vietnamese woman is standing alongside them and he realizes that 
that she is the one responsible for everything. She is the one who wiped out the French army and the missing platoon. Virtually nothing is known about her, but there are some clues as to who or what she may be. I believe she is the vengeful spirit of a woman who was killed by the Chinese hundreds of years ago. It was previously mentioned that our point is considered sacred ground for the Vietnamese and she is possibly trying to keep the land free from invaders. It's possible that her spirit only kills soldiers as the writing on the rock states if you have blood on your hands, you can't go back. Her shadow can be seen at the entrance before she appears right behind Choi. She slowly approaches him without saying a word looking kind of pretty creepy. Yeah, definitely creepy. Not wanting to become possessed and turn on Jang, he has Jang aim his weapon at him and sacrifices himself. He briefly becomes possessed before Jang successfully neutralizes the threat. Although not very scary, this was a pretty wild and fun way to end the film. Sergeant Jang is now all alone and has seemingly lost his mind. He gets rescued by the chopper, but the bodies of his squad members have disappeared. In the film's final scene, Lieutenant Choi's squad are now the ghosts calling out for help on the radio as the movie ends. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was our point. My friends, this was a really solid horror film that stands out from the usual films in the Asian horror movie genre. It had really good storytelling and managed to keep me thoroughly engaged throughout. The film somewhat does fall victim to the early 2000s cliche horror movie tropes, but not entirely. Thanks to the additional premise of war, the film finds its own identity in the genre and comes up with some really creative scares. The scares, however, are few and far between, primarily being a psychological war war film, most of the scariness comes from the suspense and tension slowly building. The war setting sort of detracts from the traditional horror one, and the scare factor ultimately suffers as a result, earning our point a mild scare score of 45%. The scariest scene in the film is when Sergeant O is confronted by the spirit of his dead friend. It's a scare that becomes scarier thanks to the horrifying context and great storytelling. Being haunted by the spirit of a dead friend you betrayed has got to be agonizingly terrifying. But as always, I hope you all enjoyed this video. Thank you all for tuning in, and I cannot wait to see y'all right back here in the Horror Mine. Y'all stick around.